Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. Personally, I cringe whenever I hear someone say, oh, it's about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> and I know part of that is because in my journey, there was a time when I was at the prophet Isaiah who said to the Lord, here am I, send me. I said that to the Lord. And then I end up in a position where I was kind of like Moses, who I used to criticize for his actions. And I was like, okay, Lord. If this is truly your will, I'd much rather if you killed me and sent me to hell than have me go through with this. It was that bad. And I'm the kind of person like this. If I have a goal, I don't want to take shortcuts because shortcuts can have potentially serious long-term consequences. And I don't necessarily like taking the scenic route, especially if it's going to cause delays. Let me know the most direct route, and that is what I'll take. But I'm not here to speak about myself. Let me give you some biblical examples of people who probably didn't like the, the journey as much as they did the destination. Yes, the journey is where the Lord truly molds us. And in some cases, the journey is long and painful. Starting in the Bible, the story of Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis 12, the Lord appeared to Abraham and told him to leave his country, his family, and go to a land that he will show him, and that he will bless him, make him a great nation. That all sounded good. And that began the journey, a physical and a spiritual journey. But at the end of Genesis 12, you notice that um, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had taken Abraham's wife, Sarah, into his harem. And let me just pause for a second. When I hear people saying about, it's about a journey, not the destination, I wonder how many of those people would be willing to endure a journey again to get to that destination. And speaking from personal experience, I know there's this particular amusement park that has a part, this particular ride that I absolutely enjoy. And I'll get off the ride and I'll want to do it again. When I look at the line, I'm like, you know what, for as much as I know what's at the end, I'm not getting in that line again. And it's not to say that I'm impatient. <laughs> One of the most productive things I've ever done while waiting in the line, I'm talking about during the course of a couple of hours in the hot August sun in Florida, was actually writing the chapter of a book. And there are some lessons I learned in that line. However, Getting to that ride truly was not worth it. The journey was not worth the destination. And that happens sometimes. So getting back to Abraham and Sarah. The Lord told him he was going to make him to a great nation. It started a physical and spiritual journey. But along that journey, many things happened. It started off with his wife getting captured by Pharaoh. Not an easy thing for a couple to get separated on those circumstances. Then it continues. Genesis 13, Lot and Abraham, their herdsmen get into a squabble and they had to part ways. Then Abraham, he got into a fight in order to rescue Lot from his captors. Then the Lord made it clear to Abraham that he was gonna bless him with a child. But in Genesis 16, you see that Sarah, probably out of frustration, had determined that she was barren. She was getting old. And as a result, you could say they tried to help God by having Abraham have a relationship with Hagar. She gave birth to Ishmael. In a sense, that is a shortcut. A shortcut that happened thousands of years ago that still has negative consequences today. And we see this with the relationship between Arabs and Jews, and also Arabs and Christians. As a result of the decision that Abraham and Sarah made to, to involve Hagar into the mix. But it continues. The Lord had appeared to Abraham and told him and Sarah that he was going to bless them with a child within a year. That's in Genesis 18. But in Genesis 19, Sarah got captured again, this time by Abimelech the king of Gerar. 
Now, it had taken 25 years for the Lord to fulfill his promise to give Abraham and Sarah a child, Isaac. Sarah was 90, Abraham was 100. That was a long wait. Sure, they loved their son, Isaac. But I can imagine, while they were waiting on the Lord to fulfill their promise, while they were going through that journey, they probably saw many other people who the Lord had not promised a child, having a child, or probably even children, and they're wondering, what is taking so long? So again, when I hear people talking about, it's about the journey and not the destination, sometimes I have to wonder what they're going through. Because if the journey was so wonderful, then they'd be willing to do it again. There are times when, quite frankly, things are so painful where it's like, I, I don't want to do that again. Oh, no, thank you. There are other examples. Abraham and Sarah, their grandson, Jacob. He went to go be with Laban. He made a deal with Laban to marry his daughter, daughter Rachel. But in order to do that, he'd worked for seven years. At the end of seven years, Jacob, he loved Rachel. He wanted to marry her. But as a part of his journey, he was deceived into marrying Leah. And he was mortified when he woke up the following morning after that wedding and found himself lying besides, besides Leah. Yes, he got a chance to marry Rachel a week later. And he had to work another seven years in order to basically earn the right to keep her. But that was a painful journey. And the sad part of that story is when Rachel was having their second child, Benjamin, she lived long enough to basically name Benjamin Ben Oni at the time, but the name was changed, but she ended up dying. So as a part of Jacob's journey, the woman that he loved, initially he was deceived in marrying someone else. It may have seemed as if that was it. He wasn't going to get the chance to marry the woman that he loved. And then when he finally got a chance to marry her, years later, she ended up dying. That was a painful journey. <laughs> like I said, the journey is where we get molded. But when we say that it's about the journey and not the destination, some journeys are so painful, it's like, truly, would you want to go through that again? In some cases, people die on the journey and never get to the destination. And I can imagine how painful it was for the Israelites, how they were on the cusp of going into the promised land. They had been in the wilderness, but they were about to go into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But because of their lack of faith in the Lord, the Lord basically condemned an entire generation, those who are 20 years and older, to remain in the wilderness for 40 years. Those individuals died and never stepped foot into the promised land. They died during the journey and never made it to the destination. Yes, the journey is important. Maybe it's just me, but quite frankly, I want to get to the destination. And I can imagine that those who are um, under age 20, knowing that they had to wait for 40 years, being in the wilderness, knowing that the Lord had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, but they were there wandering in the wilderness. So I can imagine what it was like when, when the Israelites finally got a chance to enter into the promised land. And yes, they had to fight. They had to uproot people who were there. But I can imagine how ferocious they probably were when they finally got a chance to reap the Lord's promise. And in part, because of the painful journey. And one thing about when the Lord has you in a position where you know what He has planned for you is so close, yet so far away. Because... Like in the proverb states, an inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed in the end. We know that the Israelites were successful when they conquered Jericho. But they had issues in the AI because there was 
there were some things that the Lord had to purge from them because they were disobedient. The Lord had told them to not take anything from the village or from a previous battle. And they did. And because one person's disobedience, again, it caused issues during their journey to claim the promised land. And they lost the first battle in Ai. Again, there's, there's just so much more I could say. But for as much as I value what I have learned or what we can learn on the journey, this is me speaking, but don't let the journey cause you to lose sight of the destination. Don't let the journey cause you to lose sight of the destination. Don't take shortcuts. It can cause long-term consequences. To me, don't take the scenic route if it's going to cause delays. Stay within the Lord's will. Get to where He wants you to be at the time He wants you to be there. In some cases, someone or something may be waiting for you on the other side. And how you go about approaching it will determine when you get there. And in some cases, it's not about the journey. It's about what happens when you get to the destination. And I'll even look at it this way. If you have a family member who's waiting for you for something, but because you took the scenic route and you end up showing up late, there are going to be issues. When you look in John 11, when Martha and Mary sent for Jesus because Lazarus was sick, and he showed up four days after Lazarus had died. They were not as thrilled to see Jesus as they would have been if Jesus showed up and prevented Lazarus from dying. But at least, Jesus, he's the resurrection, and he resurrected Lazarus. And in some cases, because of what happens on the journey, the Lord has to resurrect things. But in some cases, he may allow things to die. So don't take shortcuts and don't cause delays. Yes, the journey is important. But if you're like me, you want to get to the destination. God bless you.